Well, he was getting ready to break. He was breaking. He was breaking in the old outlet. So his transition would have been so easy. But he still tapped into the podcast joint, too, because think about it. Like you could go to YouTube and see like. Like 20 hours yeah, of him or man, Opie was, and Anthony or like, like fucking, yeah. you know, tough crowd and yeah. shit. So like, I'm like, that was before podcasts and before like, yeah. come on, the nigga was yeah. running. He was like housing those fucking shows like, oh, this nigga made right, this right. crack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I think I think what happened, too, is I, 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 it's it's a weird thing when they think about him talking about race. Like, and I wanted to say this, but when it comes to race, like white dudes who heard him on Opie and Anthony and they were talking about, um, say, per se, uh, uh, oh, he, he, he never got that. offended and you can have these racial conversations with him and he never mind. He was never offended. And it's like, dog, what you don't. I, and I don't know if you knew this, but Patrice had a rape beef when he was like 16, 17. Yeah, I heard of that. Did, right. So. Here's what happened. The girl, the girl had a had a like let two him and, and another dude run a train on her. And then her brother found out. And then her brother was like, what happened? What happened? And because the white shorty. She, yeah, the white shorty. And then he she was like, I was raped. Right. And so he's like 16, 17 years old. And they because so and this is this interesting thing, because this little white girl's reputation was more important than his his freedom. I think he did something like 18 months in the, pen, in the penitentiary and shit. And it was like, and it's a skin beef, right? So what's real interesting is he did the time that his boy that went in with him like snapped. He couldn't handle it and he, he never was the same, right? Uh, he used to talk about this to me to, to tell me how to do went in there and he was scared of getting raped so he wouldn't take a shower he wouldn't wash he wouldn't clean he smell and so when his funk started to to um to <laughs> infringe upon other other niggas they they did him dirty right? Right, right right so so his man never even survived but but if you think about that through your life that happens to you when you're 16 17 and then you in this this industry, this predominantly white industry, and then people are telling you, you got to do this and you got to do this. You can't even fathom what's that like to have a, to, ha- to literally have a sex offender beef, right? And when you're 16 years old, where they just made an example of you, and now you're in this business, it's predominantly white people running the business, and they telling you, do this, do that. You always going to be like, nah, I'm doing what I want to do. And I'm uh, and that's something I, I know, Harry, you didn't ever even thought of it like that because of that. Can you imagine that's your start off before you start? That, I mean, that's definitely that, going to have an impact. Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't it? That I mean, changes why wouldn't it everything. That, everything about so it's, it. Right. So it's real easy to say he was self-sabotaging because he didn't do what you thought he should have, what anybody thought he should have done to get famous. But when you, when you understand how the system works in a real way, right. And you end up with a skin beef for nothing, right. Just because your, this little pristine little white girl's reputation is more important than his freedom. And they just take, just throw it. And then you, 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 that's, that's everything that you do in comedy shape is shaped by who you grew up. And that's so probably, when you that get, definitely sounds like it affected him because he never wanted to be controlled in any capacity. And that's why he, a lot of the things he walked away from because he didn't either didn't have control or somebody else had a say in it. And he just didn't want that. He wanted to be free at every moment. He is so and wild. And the other thing is that he didn't want to he didn't want to. So when he was talking to dudes who were all these dudes who would say racist shit and do all kinds of racist shit, he would it wouldn't affect him because he was like, I see how you rock anyway. I don't give a fuck about what you think about me because I already know what you think about me. So being defiant in that. And I've always I've always said years and years. I said that Patrice was was self-sabotaging. And in retrospect, I don't feel like he was because when you you come from that in the first place, 
like, how do you think that doesn't affect? I mean, if you tell me if Jim Gaffigan had got hooked up, a hook hit with a fucking skim beef, he probably wouldn't be talking about hot pockets. It's <laughs> easy to, you know what I mean? It's a, it's easy to, to do to say that from the outside when you don't live that life. You man, school two o two. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.